Dave Parody here with another slide makeover video podcast based on the ideas in my book, The Visual Slide Revolution. Today's slides come to us from a workshop participant who uh, enjoyed what I had done and said, hey, you know, I've got some uh, slides for an upcoming presentation. I'm not really sure how to make them visual. So here's what she sent me. It's uh, around a program for uh, assessing progress in educational uh, quality um, in a in an area and what they're trying to do is talk about the infrastructure sort of the roles that different uh, people have in this whole process so they're talking about the infrastructure and they talk first about this uh, role called the EQAP region coordinator ERC so they talk about a couple of things and there some of the builds on this slide don't uh, work the way they're supposed to because they weren't set up properly but I wanted to show you what this looks like so they would be going through each of these and again an enormous amount of text here so that's one role. And then they talk about uh, some other roles, uh, different responsibilities for three different roles here uh, with uh, in a district, a school, and then some contracted. And the challenge is with when you're describing responsibilities between different roles in any organization is that people will lose context because these three roles here, for example, you're not really sure, well, how does that relate to the set of responsibilities that the role on the previous slide had? I'm not really sure. And, and how do these things fit together? What is far better to do is to show it visually. The problem is, how do you fit all this detail onto one slide? It's split over two slides now, and you say, but Dave, if you added a visual, you know, you'd have to put micro text on the slide, which is true. So that's why we use a technique that uh, the general technique I call is, is uh, break down and zoom in. So let me show you how I redesigned this slide. Here's where I started. Now, let me talk about the different roles in the EQAP uh, process. There's the national EQAP, and in each region, there is a coordinator, the EQAP region coordinator. We use a short form ERC for that particular role. They interface with the school and the community, as well as the contracted assessment team that actually does the assessment in the schools. So let's look at the details of the relationship between each of these groups. So let's start with the relationship between the ERC and the school community. We certainly got the school and community, but there are actually a couple of other roles that exist in this area. The first is a district contract contact where they're sort of a, a contact that spans multiple schools in a district and then there's an individual EQAP school coordinator in each school. So in terms of the relationship what are the responsibilities of each of these roles? Well our ERC confirms the assessment date with each of the schools and of course the district person knows that as well. They provide the schools with all the information, background, documentation they need to be able to notify the parents and guardians of what the test is, why it's being done, when the date is, what the preparations are, those sorts of things. They're the, the key contact for anybody in the school or community to ask any questions because they're the ones who can respond to those questions. And of course they work with everybody to make sure the process is smooth from signing up, from getting the information out, uh, actually uh, arranging for the assessment test to be done, sent back in, etc. So that's what the ERC does. The district contact what they do is they're primarily uh, involved in communication. So they're the one who is helping the ERC to communicate with each of the schools and, and in each of the schools to get that communication out. The individual school coordinator works with the ERC again on the communications, but also the supervisor. And the supervisor is part of the contract team. We'll talk about that next. And they work with them to oversee the entire process in that individual school, make sure the rooms are set up properly, everybody's arranged, the dates, the lists, etc. So then what you would do is you would go and look at the next individual set of relationships. I didn't do that in the slides because I wanted to give you one example of it. But anytime you are looking at relationships between different roles, here are some lessons that we can take from this makeover that will help in any situation where we have to explain what are what is the relationship between these different roles. First of all, always start with an overview. Without an overview, uh, the audience really doesn't have context. They don't really know, well, how does this all fit together? The paragraphs that this particular makeover started with, you had no idea how things fit together or who was actually in relationship with whom. Then, after you give the overview, zoom in. 
take just one small portion. It could be a couple of, of rolls as I did here, or it could be maybe two or three rolls if that makes more sense. But then look at the details of each of those individual relationships by zooming in on them. And that's where you add the detail. Don't put the detail at the overview level because it clutters the slide up way too much and it's impossible to explain it. Add the detail only at the zoom in level. By breaking it into separate slides, People, if you print them out as a handout, they will have that reference and they'll have all the detail available. They'll have it at a readable level so they can actually refer to it later on. If you want more information on the book, go to www.visualsliderevolution.com for more information on my training workshops, uh, individual consulting videos and other resources. Go to www.thinkoutsidetheslide.com. This has been Dave Parody with another Slide Makeover video podcast.